Now, ever since Reality freaking updated the uh, booth feature to include furniture so I could set up the sit down, it's been really funny to, fun to mess with and get something up. But anyway, ah, uh, geez, that's just one of my catchphrases, isn't it? Uh, we're still on the train of epic stuff because I, I'm still wanting to watch more animatics as more Wisdom Saga stuff comes out. So today, I think this one's going to be a little bit different. So obviously, this is the alternate one, which I still need to add more videos to. But what we're going to do today is going to be a bit different. So obviously, with some new animatics, we're going to watch these two, obviously. So a new Little Wolf animatic from Duvet Box, who did the... Uh, who did the legendary animatic that we watched for the reaction, and then Gigi's We'll Be Fine, which just came out a couple days ago and I want to talk about because it's really good. And then, to cap this one off, because I do want to watch Andy Fama's God Games, but I kind of want to make that one a double feature with Neil Illustrators whenever he drops it, so we're going to wait a little bit on that one because I want to make that like a double feature animatic talk because good shit. I'm excited for both. I'm excited to see what both of them do. So... This is going to be a bit of a triple threat, so we're going to get, do Little Wolf and We'll Be Fine from Animators, but next, this one right here is going to be for Love and Paradise, but it's a compilation of like all of the canonical animatics that were in the live stream, which kind of try to construct and figure some stuff out, but it is fun, and I do want to talk about them mostly because Love and Paradise like has the most animatic, like animated portions of it. I think so far I'm on some of the songs. Well, okay, not quite, but it is the one that someone made a compilation of. I could just watch the live stream, honestly. We'll probably do that. I, I mean, maybe if I change my mind, maybe we'll just go over the live stream. But I want to at least do these two. At least do these two. Maybe we'll go over this one, and maybe maybe I'll just go over the Wisdom Saga live stream and another thing. I tr I, I, I try to figure things out so much. Anyway, Yapanomics done. This isn't going to turn into like 15 minutes like it was that I that clip I posted. So, let's see then how Dubit Box handled Little Wolf, because I'm excited because uh, Antinius had a very good design, and I'm very interested to see how he handles Little Wolf. So, let's commence. Yes, first, capes off. Don't don't fight with capes on. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> the description of the video was actually funny. It was, no capes. Anyone who's seen The Incredibles knows immediately what the meme is. But also, yeah, no. <laughs> Are you, again, I need to see the light, the freaking uh, animatics from the live stream. We'll, I'll, I'll definitely have to watch that just because I said I would. We'll just cover it in the live stream. Fuck it. But I do like the look here with Antinius. You know, the scar of the eye. You got the dress. You got all that stuff. Like, he's a big dude. That's a good opening, though, having him, like, absolutely just, just literally just, nah, swerve everything. No, there, there is no respect on this man's face. Look at the smug face. There is no respect at all. <laughs> what is the zest? Why this man kind of zesty? Hold on, Dubet. <laughs> Why are you a little zesty here? <laughs> okay, actually here, just real quick, let me just lower the volume just a little bit since we're more focused on the animatic, of course, let the song be more in the background. Yeah, no, why Antinius a little zesty here? Ex explain that one, Duvet. <laughs> I, I, I joke, I praise, I praise. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good detail to it with that, though. Having him put, just approach and put his hand on his shoulder like that. Oh, my God. You know, li throat lifting someone takes a lot of effort, but then again, Antinius is also, like, twice Telemachus' size, so, yeah. Ooh! <laughs> You saw it build up, but I love that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Listen, okay. Okay, we're going to get it with the lyrics, too. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to apologize. This song's barely going to be audible to you guys. Uh, I thought it was going to be bite, but no, just literally fight. Just, I mean, hey, you know, that's what we get out. Just bite the hand, literally, in this case. Ooh.
That's another good one, actually. The the other suitors grabbing Telelakis and shoving him back into the fight. Oh, wait, that was an impact frame. Hold on, that was an impact frame. Oh, that's so good. Okay, I caught that briefly, but that was actually an impact frame. That's a good thing to use. Oh, that's nice. But yeah, having that, having that be like when you have the chorus kick back in and they just shove him back into the fight. <laughs> yeah, this is just such a good interpretation of it. Ooh, the imp again, the impact frames. I have to praise that. Look at that. Like, okay, it's not as detailed, obviously, because it's impact frames. But just having those at all is so good. Like, that's a... Okay, just to kind of tell tell you about it. Impact frames in animation as a form of it, and this is why, why catching them is so fun. Impact frames are kind of meant to give an emphasis, right? Like, it's why you get that flash where, like, it, the entire art style kind of shifts a bit, and you get get a different color palette so it goes black and white instead of like the kind of more ambient colors used for the animatic here impact frames are always meant to kind of sell how hard a hit goes like um i watch a lot of anime obviously and this is very much a thing that you see in anime a ton where when characters land a hit or they're trying to give impact to something like say a dramatic pose you will have a quick flash of a frame where things like shift out entirely to kind of give sense to that punch of it and this can also really be used to kind of get, this is also a good animation trick, because obviously, note how we go right from Tele, uh, Telemachus posted up to getting decked in the face just immediately. Part of why impact frames help is it can actually save you that uh, animation scheme, because you effectively get to save frames by cutting out a lead-in, and it effectively is a good way to also give this impl inclination of, like, say, speed, right? So, like, both times, the moment... He gets hit, it's just an impact frame. We don't even see an, see the wind-up from Antinius. He just whams it, Telemachus, right there. There, and then we just get the follow-up. Which, that is really good use of animation techniques, and that is so good to see from Duvet Box. Holy shit. Oh my god, animating, like, the blood flying off with every hit. Also, look at this man's face. Look at this man's eyes. Look at... Look at those deranged eyes. This, man, this is a man who is absolutely thrilled to be beating up a 20-year-old. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. Come on. Ooh. Like, show that, too. That's a good way to show that. The, the, again, look at this man's face. He's so thrilled to beat up a 20-year-old. But then having it be a slow few frames to show his fist slowing down as uh, Athena a activates her quick thought in Telemachus. Ooh, that's so good. Need some help? And here we get another really good Athena design. Okay, that that's a... I like that kind of smooth transition. Having her remove the helmet by more like she's slicking her hair back from underneath it. Yeah, that's so fun. Holy shit. That's actually really good. And I like that... Okay, Doofit Box actually does something nice with Athena, kind of portraying her more as a bit more scarred. Showing, you know, because she is a goddess of war, like Ares. So it, it's nice to kind of portray this that, like, she has a bit of scars, but it makes her look a lot cooler, you know? Scars make can make someone look cool, or they can make them look threatening or scary. It all depends on, like, uh, how they're used, how they're portrayed, right? Like, like, say it like this. A thin scar over the bridge of the nose and over the mouth can make someone look a lot cooler. A ragged scar over the eye like Antinius can make someone look more intimidating. Or, like, you know, basically it's all on how disfiguring the scar technically is. Is it kind of like a clean, slight thing that it can add to the features? Is it kind of rugged and rough? It can make them look intimidating. Is it outright disfiguring to the point it reshapes the entire face? Th that's how you get shit like Two-Face and Batman. Scars are a very good little, like, storytelling device for a character's appearance or to give us kind of some flair to an otherwise normal-looking face. And I do like this look. Also kind of leaning into the Eden human aspects a bit by giving Athena pointed ears instead of normal ones. Or, like, when she had her helmet on, you obviously had, like, the, uh... the blank eyes, obviously. Really nice. Really nice. And again, that's a good transition effect. Frickin' removing the helmet as if she's just slicking back her hair instead. Ooh, that's so good. Ooh, but look at that. Oh, that's another good thing. I like... 
again, I like seeing the different art styles and how they, like, add some kind of the animalistic features here. So, like, for example, like, um, with freaking Wolfie the Witch or some others, like, I think Gigi does it too, where they make Athena look kind of owlish, right? They make her features kind of bird-like. Her face especially kind of mimics that of, like, a bird in its beak and the owl's face specifically. But here, I like Duvet giving her talons, giving her claws instead. That's actually really fun. That's a really fun take on this, giving her claws. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, let's dial back to the face. Yeah, that's a fun way, like, as a showman Athena putting in the influence on... Ooh, Duvet Box is so good. Also, I... Okay, okay, I want to talk about that little sequence, too, with the impact frame, obviously. Okay, let's dial that back. Yeah, so again, the impact frame. I like how it's two here, though. So you have the cutout, and then you have the hit. Yeah, so we have, like, two here. So you have, like, the show, then you have the impact, and then it shows them. Wait, and <laughs> I like Telemachus' face here. It's all scrunched up and, like, Ugh! Which shows that he kind of just went off instinct, and maybe in this case with the interpretation here, Athena kind of influenced him how he moved a little bit. <laughs> I love every interpretation. Oh, jeez. I, I remember I saw the canon animatic from the live stream where, like, the how did I do that was just as funny, but also the I don't know. <laughs> oh, that, I'm gonna have to show that one and talk about it because it's so funny. When we get to, when I react to the live stream, we'll, I'll do that one next. And uh, just to kind of state it here, I probably won't, mostly just because it was delisted, so I won't talk about the uh, Thunderbringer live stream, because if it's not available, then I won't watch it. Simple, simple as, if, Jorge, if it's like not something that Jorge has open on the channel, then we won't talk about it. In the case of things like animatics, obviously these are fan-made and different, yada yada. So, if I do react to anything for the live stream, it'll definitely be from Jorge, the actual VOD that Jorge has on his channel. So, just to keep that it, just to keep that noted. <laughs> Again, I love the I always love how confused he is. He's always so confused, but I mean, he, I, you would be too. <laughs> the bonk. <laughs> the bonk with the spear. It's like, no. Ooh, that's... Okay, I like that. Okay, let's just play that back again. Again, just the boy, just the boy, our precious boy. Look at him. <laughs> All right, now let's try this again. That's so fun too. Clearing up his face, face before they start it up again. Ooh, that's so good. And the snap, oh, that's a good visual too. The snap to indicate shifting back to normal time. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. You like, look, it was established in the comments. You're allowed to simp over the voice. You're not allowed to simp over him. Okay, this man's an asshole. But also, I can kind of get where you'd come from. I'm just saying, don't look at this crazy bastard. <laughs> And that, I like that too. Athena sweeping the spear around around for that line. Ooh. Also, I do like the analogy though. One one young wolf has more heart than all these men combined. Yeah, because fuck these guys. <laughs> God, I cannot wait to see the, see them get what's coming to them from Odysseus later on. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Okay, that's a fun take on it, though. Him, like, taking off his cape and using it kind of like that. It's kind of like a matador thing. Yeah, using it to catch... Yeah, 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 he's using it to catch Antinius' punches. Hold on. Yep, that's one. That's two. Yep, using it to catch the punches and basically stop stop the momentum. Ooh, that's a, that's a good detail. You tell, I do bet you really understand how to do a fight. Absolute max praise, holy shit. Ooh. Ooh. A 
Hey, the headbutt. Always go for it. The human head is a lot harder than you think, so hey, if you get caught like that, just use your head. Literally. Basically a hammer. Okay, I I immediately like Doofet's Athena. Like, it, it's kind of cool to go a bit more of an androgynous route with her, but also, like, that, that expression of, like, ooh, yeah. Mm, may maybe this was a bit too much for you, kid. Oof, I'm sorry. But also, just damn. Having that culminate off him getting fucking suplexed, like, god dang. Yeah, just getting absolutely slammed. Oof. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> that was just a pack, that's a, that, that, yeah, getting in suplex like that would fucking hurt. Go back and climb your corner, make sure your mother hears, if she won't choose a man to adorn her, will bring blood and tears. Ooh. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's just how the sun ended. Okay. Because I, I, I got confused because I did see G uh, Gigi's earlier, and Gigi actually did something cool. But, oh, man, Duvet's, Duvet's animatics are so good, and I like seeing them do more. Like, they don't have a lot on their channel right now, but they're so fucking talented. Oh, my God. I hope to get to see them do something officially. I do like this. The Athena going with the side look. <laughs> just like... Well, it's a long story. Now, since it does kind of go right into it, let's talk about Gigi's legend. Let's talk about Gigi's We'll Be Fine, because that one is so fun, and I'm so happy to talk about it. So, the thing to bring up here is Gigi actually starts it. Th this is the end of Little Wolf, so it starts it from the end of Little Wolf, so it goes right into the transition, actually. Gigi also repo actually reposted their uh, her, it, I think it's her, her uh, freaking animatics for freaking Horse and the Infant and Just a Man to use the new recordings and basically made them one bigger video, which is really fun. Not a whole lot to talk about. It's the same animatics that just uses the new recordings of the songs. So, so really good. Watch those. But I do like Gigi's choice here of choosing to start the animatic off of the end of Little Wolf instead of just going from the beginning of We'll Be Fine. Kind of gives a point of transition to work with, so. Praise immediately. I like this. Tel Telemach is just kind of rushing into the room and shutting the door. And the bird. So immediately, because I finally get to talk about it, I have seen uh, Gigi's Telemachus design for a couple, basically a while at this point, almost a year now, uh, thanks to her freaking legendary WIP animatic and uh some from like other snippets from later songs that are probably going to be in the next saga so i i really like Gigi's uh take here i've always appreciated how a lot of the uh animatics design telemachus whenever they if they cover him that he looks like a younger uh odysseus mostly but Gigi in particular kind of takes an interesting way where he's kind of like a mix of his parents like he has a kind of a slimmer more elegant design that Pene that she gives penelope well he has the general facial facial features of his dad. So it's just really fun. He, he looks like a younger, more innocent Odysseus. <laughs> oh, boy. And I love the usage of the of the owl here and having it like be pure white to kind of paint it out differently from the rest of the animatic looks really nice. Oh, I love this animation here. Let's just, okay, let's dial that back a bit, though. Just, like, when he pokes it, it's so cute. <laughs> Look at him. Look at this boy. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, jeez, if anything hurts him, again, I say. Then again, you know, he's got Athena to help him out with that. And his dad will be home soon, so it'll be fine. You know, after, um, that just gets over his current understandable depression arc. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, I 
I like that too. The owl turning into like these these lights in the sky. Ooh, that's so good. I helped him fight through war, but he had his feelings too, and then we grew apart. Then he oh, using it to kind of show him like what happened from my goodbye. Ooh, that's good. This light went dark. Ooh, these flashes are so good. <laughs> Okay, and these were there too. Let's see if I can't catch them. Yeah, so again, this is meant to be from my goodbye. Kind of that, like, clash, that conflict there. Final argument from ten years before. Yeah, I like it being hazy too. It almost kind of glitchy like it's a hazy memory of a TV. Also, I do like the portrayal of Athena being, like, massively tall. She's, like, twice Telemachus's height here. So having to like actually duck under the uh, entryway into the bedroom. Also, again, Gigi is really good with the camera work. Like, I cannot imagine how long that took to do that that smooth camera move like that. Let's. Like, yeah, it's only a few frames, but the camera movement is so good. Ah, Gigi, you're always so talented. Oh, and I like how, like, it, the, the background details, you have Medusa, you have the, the Minotaur, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Scylla. No, 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 the Hydra. It's supposed to be the Hydra. Duh. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to be the Hydra, but, oh, uh, it being a family portrait, oh, that's so nice. Again, uh, I just had to let it play because it, it's so good, but <laughs> the way I love the way Gigi is so good at using the movements, like just the way Athena moves matches the lyrics perfectly. Just that kind of that sadness, that regret that she obviously feels towards what happened with Odysseus almost a decade ago and how she's reflected on it and thought about it. Like, could the, yeah, like just you can see it in how she moves, how sad she feels about it. And it's like, ah. And look at his face too, just, oh, it gets across so much, much where this goes, and he see, oh, that's such a good way to get across Athena's pain in this entire situation, oh, again, ever, props to Gigi, always good, always amazing, the best! I need to establish again that this boy's expectations were not even on the floor. The bar was in the ground. <laughs> My boy, Telemachus, your expectations were on the ground in terms of where that fight could have gone. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, his expectations were not simply low. They were on they were in the goddamn hole. Uh, but I just again, just immediate bright sunshine boy. And again, oh, the animation is so good. Just the air boxing. <laughs> Just, oh. Gigi! <laughs> How long did this shot take? How long did this, sh did this rotating shot take? Like, how how long did that take to plot out? Just the rotation. Of all of this, because I'm, like, we're gonna frame by frame this, just look at that. Yeah, okay, so it's animated on twos, if not even, a bit more than twos, actually. Because it is an animatic, so it's more than twos. But, like, just the rotating shot. You go from here, and then it's just like this. Like, how long did that take to do with the whole rotation in the cell and everything? Oh my god, it's so good! It just didn't beat on the rail. Ah. Uh, that's such a good gag to this, just like, he's a bit too enthusiastic and falls off the goddamn ledge. Boy, you're lucky Athena was there. 
But I like that she catches on to the vibe, though. Like, look, look at the faces from both of them. Ah, uh, it's so good. Also, okay, this is just such good composition, actually. Like, just the shot composition alone. Going, showing the sunlight, too. Just having, like, the bright white up here. Almost shading Athena like the like this and obscuring her a little bit while it shines out until Amak is like this. This is just good scene composition, and this is... Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Gigi is so good. Like, her talent is so... I would love to see something done by Gigi in a fully animated state, state and not just an animatic, because I feel like it would be great. Get people to help her out. Oh. And the, oh, the frame of this shot, too. Again, the entire frame in here fits into the symbolism. I know it's light you'll find, and who's going to be Athena's new light but Telemachus? The one to help her get the confidence to go literally to her father, to Zeus, and say, Hey, free my boy Odysseus. I think he's been punished enough. Also, got a cute detail, and I love this. Oh, you can see in the face. Hold up. Before we talk about this, I want to talk about this. This is so good, too. But I got to talk about the expression, too. Look, just the way her expression, like, whenever I think of the phrase of saying a person's face melts, going from the shock to a warm smile, what do you think she's remembering here? When Odysseus tried to, you know, do this something like this too. Goddess and man, bestest of friends. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his fucking face. I love him. I love his, him so much. Uh, Gigi's... Telemachus is so good. I love him. <laughs> and it's nice that she returns the high five. Not really like a full slap. Like not a... But just, just kind of a gentle little tap. A gen she returns it just in her own way. Ah, it's so good. Ultimate sign of friendship. And just the, just the face on the thanks. And one thing to bring up here at the end, though. Th this, I, this, oh, that's nice, this. Also, okay, I have to, I have to show it just before we go. We're gonna end this off real quick, just before we go, because this. No, 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 stay back! Wait, where'd you get that piano? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I love that Gigi does these little things every now and again. This is not the only one she's done. <laughs> she's done a couple others that were really funny. <laughs> but of all of the spits, the random SpongeBob piano for Calypso uh, coming on to a distance without his consent. This, this. Also, I am... <laughs> it's just a piano PNG too! <laughs> I love this kind of low effort shit post stuff. Couldn't even break it in a real. <laughs> also, 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 just the scuttle. Watch the scuttle. Watch the scuttle. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the scuttle is so good. Oh, I had to. I had to. The moment that that one popped up, it's like, okay, we're watching that too. That's our little. That's our little bonus for this one. That's our love and paradise bonus. <laughs> Uh, right off on this face of poor Odysseus, uh, till the next one where I think, since we're gonna wait a bit longer for Neil Illustrator's, uh, God Game is animatic to do a double feature like we did with Ruthlessness, um, next up, I think we'll start going over the live stream at, at the least, uh, as related to Wisdom Saga, so, that will be an interesting one to do, because that'll be a first, so I will have, about to thank Jorge for leaving that VOD on for people to talk about, <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs>